Okay, welcome back to another Walking with Charlie. And as you can see, he's, uh, I'll show you, he's got his, uh, his outerwear collection on again. Uh, getting him into that, honestly, what, is that interesting, Charlie? Every single thing is interesting to him. Told you, walking a schnauzer. Anyway, uh, getting him into this thing, it's like dressing a toddler. And then he won't want to take it off. It's quite silly. Anyway, come on, buddy. So, okay, we're nine, ten months into this thing. It's a marathon, right? Told you. Feels like it's uh, never going to end, doesn't it? And I don't know about you, where you live, but where I live in Ontario, we're now into another lockdown. So we're kind of going back to the way we figured things out in March, like no haircuts and restaurants are closed except for takeout. And good luck with your Christmas shopping because that's going to be Amazon only, it seems, or patronize your box store and uh, get curbside pickup. So we're back to dealing with that stuff. So... I think we all got to kind of dig in a little bit here and get our second wind, you know. Uh, marathoners often talk about getting that second wind. Now, I disabled the comments because, no, I don't marathon, but I do know what we're talking about. I think all of us have had that experience of having to find that extra uh, set of wind in our sails, that second wind, that, that power to kind of keep going just when we think it's really tough. And I think we're all going to have to do that now right although i think many of us have adjusted you know our work we kind of figured that out and family and stuff but it's getting kind of boring getting kind of long right and hopefully you're not in a business that's really struggled because i really feel for those entrepreneurs and business owners and employees that worked really hard to make their way through this and you know the word of 2020s pivot right they did their very best and you know the government's got to shut them down lock them down and they got to find new ways to move forward and sadly some of them probably won't unfortunately so that's where we are. So how do we deal with this? How do we keep dealing with this? Maybe is the better way to think about it. And I think the one positive thing, if we can find one uh, that can come out of this is, remember I told you a long time ago to look for the silver linings? Well, there are those. And I think we got to dig in and find those. I was talking to a friend the other day uh, who they have a, a small child at home. And he said, you know, Darren, the one good thing about this working from home so I'm spending way more time with my daughter than I ever thought I could. Like, I don't have to commute anymore. I can be with her when she wakes up. I can help give her lunch. That's a blessing, right? That's a good thing. So those are some good news stories. I was also talking uh, to a, uh, a parent of a child who's also in high school, like my daughter is, and my son's university. And we're talking about how difficult it is for the kids because none of this is what they thought it was going to be, right, in terms of their high school experience or their university experience. And I said, you know... There's nothing we can do about it, except deal with it. And I thought, one of the things that might come out of this, hopefully, is that we're gonna be raising a generation of young people that are gonna be pretty good at handling adversity, right? Like, they've had to really adjust to this too, emotionally, and also just physically in terms of how they go to school, where they go to school, online, that kind of thing. So hopefully, as I say, they'll be adults that have learned through that experience on how to deal with adversity. You know, we quite often talk about the greatest generation, right? That our grandparents and great grandparents that went through the war and went through depressions and all those things. And gosh, we're not even close to going through that type of disruption, are we? And yet we call them the greatest generation because they had to deal with massive adversity and build a wonderful society out of that. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do today is I want you to think about a skill that you should already be using that I think if you really think about it, you can treat it as a muscle you can build upon. And that's the ability to improvise. Now, think about any time you've traveled or any time you've had a challenge. One of the things that probably came out of that when you look back on it was some positive memories about how you had to learn to adapt and adjust and overcome what it was that you were dealing with. And I think that's because we reach down at moments of adversity and find our creativity. And that is called improvisation. And I think many of us have had to improvise all the time in the last year, but I want you to treat that as more of an active process, not just something you kind of had to do. And it's also something that the more you do it, I think the better you get at it. Now, what are some of the preconditions for improvisation? Well, I think the first thing is you need to be aware that you're doing it. That's one thing. So know that you have options. Know you can adjust. Know that there might be things you haven't thought about yet that they're out there. And I hope that that gives you some optimism that there might be things you haven't considered and maybe you can turn the corner and there's a great idea right there for you. I think the other one is that you kind of still have to have a plan to know where you want to go, right? I've always been a big believer in the phrase that discipline breeds freedom. Now, I don't know where that came from. That might be from the military. If somebody knows, send me an email because I'm not entirely sure of the etymology of that phrase, but it's a very powerful idea. And it's one that, frankly, if you had been building a plan 
for your wealth, for your retirement, for your work, for your career, for your family, if you have that in place, you can adjust around it. Like think of an actor, right? If they know their lines, they can improvise if they have to. They can adjust to something that might go differently or, or unexpected. Think about the athlete. The more that they've trained, the more they can call an audible on the field, the more they can adapt and adjust to whatever happens around them. Think about the business person, right? Who's been able to build a really solid business. They made sure that their finances were in good shape. They can probably adapt to this better, their, better than their competitors are. Now I realize there's limits to this, right? Like if the government shuts you down, there's only so much you can do, but there's probably more you can do than you thought. And we saw a lot of businesses have to improvise, pivot, adjust in the last round of shutdowns. I don't know how many of them will be able to do it again because having a second or third one wasn't really in the cards, but many of them will figure it out. And if here's the thing, if you're having a struggle with that now, my advice to you is make your decisions fast. That's one of the other things that I think comes out of improvisation is the ability to make quick decisions. And the faster you can make decisions, again, as long as you're congruent with your plan, I think the better off you're going to be. So there you go. i got to improvise. Uh, Charlie just made a mess, so i got to deal with that. So with that, I'll say see you later. Uh, keep walking, keep improvising, and uh, keep reaching out to your friends and your family and stay in touch with them through Zoom. And if you love them, don't hug them. you got to keep away from them for a little bit. Okay, that's about it. We'll see you later. I told you this Addy Dog thing wasn't legit. And that border collie that keeps emailing you, I hate to break your heart, but I think that's a scam.